Hello beautiful souls and welcome to another pick a card. I'm very excited to bring this reading to you guys. So this is gonna be your prediction for the month of May and we're doing a very detailed long reading because as you can see as always I have three piles. This is my usual number of piles that I feel I have enough energy to fulfill but each pile is gonna be consisting of three segments. So each segment will cover different field of life. And in this reading on YouTube, I'll be doing every pile for their spiritual segment, their esoteric messages, their spiritual messages, their ascension process for the, mo for, for the month of May, since this is the niche of readings that I like to dive into, I like to do, and therefore I've attracted this community. So I know many of you are interested in messages from the other side, from your spirit guides, from your angels, um, from your galactic families, etc, etc, ancestors. So this is what we are doing on YouTube. But if you are also interested in your career and love life, Everything will be linked under the timestamps for each pile, so you can go and purchase the extended portion for every reading for each pile um, and basically get the full reading for the month of May. But if you're not interested in these other fields or they're just not the biggest priority, you can stick to the YouTube version, to the YouTube portion actually, and just enjoy this time with me and see what spirit has for you. Um, I wonder if there's anything else for this intro. I think not. So please pause the video, meditate on the piles or just see what visually draws you in the most. Um, although I always, always, always encourage a little bit of concentration, a little bit of attention when you pick your pile. Um, don't go blindly by the prettiest crystal or the prettiest set of cards. Um, because, yeah, <laughs> uh, sometimes the brain can, let's say, choose something before your intuition does, simply because it's harmonized color-wise um, in terms of how things are set up. So this can be a little tricky. I don't recommend going by the prettiest pile or group or the cards or the crystals. I always, always, always recommend kind of thinking about the numbers, thinking about what is underneath these cards, um, which cards will be most accurate. I always have this question in mind, which pile is most is going to be most accurate for me? And for some reason, when I ask myself this question, when I pick a pile, when I watch readings, um, this really, really helps me and I'm almost always in the right space, in the right pile. So yeah, that is my recommendation. But of course, at the end of the day, do what works best for you. So, um, beautiful family, I will see you in your reading. The timestamps are in the comment section below and the description box. All right, so this is a little bit of a different setup. So now you can choose between the esoteric segments for each pile and I'm going to leave you some time here. Hopefully you pause the video. Now let's continue with pile number one. I'm going to remove these, place them aside. And let's begin with your spiritual messages. You have Neptune, um, dreams, delusions, connecting to the essence and fluidity. We have abundance. Solar plexus chakra. It is safe for you to be powerful and take charge of your life in positive ways. Nutrition. You conduct healing work with your culinary skills and time to decide. Make a decision based on your heart's true desires. Okay. 
in terms of spiritual messages you're sort of getting the full package because i feel like you're trying to make your life a um full package deal and to create the full reinvention so every little thing so you're working on your creativity and psychic abilities you're working on your abundance mindset on your confidence most likely working out or trying to as much as you can then trying to eat healthy and then trying to be brave and make the decisions you want to make for this new version of yourself so this feels like a the uh, overall sort of even cliche glow up that we go through uh, sometimes when just we fix everything you know one after the other things fall into place things are flowing we are taking care of everything we are on top of the world and for the month of may this is what you're getting like this spiritual affirmation from the universe that you are doing the best you can and you are on top of the world right now um you're doing better than you possibly could do at this point in life and with your current circumstances that's the best you can do this is what the universe is um telling you i'm hearing something about silhouettes here seeing things but not in their full portion or full size or not just the full embodiment of something which is a strange message mm, so allow me to break it down here you may be getting glimpses of your guides or glimpses of past lives your soul essence your identity glimpses of the messages you really wish to to receive um definitely your intuition is heightened but it's still not fully there and um, with neptune something is still missing when it comes to your spirituality um there is this threshold that it's almost like you're being invited to cross over but you're not crossing over it you feel underprepared for something more on the psychic level more in the astral realm you feel underprepared for this and that's why you pay more attention to other aspects of your life i see a lot of the physical priorities you know the material priorities um in your spiritual segment of this reading so this means that a lot of your energy is just focused on grounded work um you know the food you eat the books you're reading um accomplishing your goals and dreams and if any spirituality or meditation something like this is taking place it's very much focused on creating abundance manifesting being a conscious creator so even your spiritual energy or spiritual practices are engaged somehow with the physical plane the material plane and the material manifestation of things a lot of numbers in the month of may a lot of uh i keep hearing the word <laughs> typical a lot of um just typical confirmations the feathers the numbers you're getting a lot of the usual same old types of confirmations from the universe you think about someone and you see them i almost feel like the universe is trying to engage you back into spirituality um with baby steps you know trying to get your human brain interested first before your soul is fully invested in this before your heart is fully invested because for some reason i feel like you guys weren't us spiritual oriented um or you were and then you weren't like you know that period of forget about spirituality i have other things to take care of that happens to the best of us but the universe is trying to invite you back into this magical space of existence by giving you these little signs these um little synchronicities and messages trying to 
make you remember the spark and the magic. Um, the fairy dust and so on and so forth. Indeed, in the month of May, I feel like energetically you are very much empowered and you know yourself. In the month of May, there is a huge self reassurance that you will go through. Um, you're gonna become your best friend, is what it seems. I feel like with the mindset of abundance, you've been working on it a lot and you're manifesting ease. Um, you know, giving money away with ease, like buying things you really want to buy, for example, good, high quality food with ease. And I know that this is a privilege and not everybody has it, but I see in the cards that you've been working on manifesting more abundance so that you can be more free spirited, um, more um, easy going when it comes to the money in and out, the money exchange, um, so that you can allow yourself to live a high quality life and invest in that and see your investment return. So all the, for example, you know, high quality food that you're purchasing, it's more expensive, but it makes you feel more energetic. You can accomplish a lot more because you feel so good. You know, it's you're taking care of your longevity, you're gonna have uh, deeper uh, work sessions, you're gonna have more concentration, better hormones, better energy levels, all of these things that contribute to more abundance flowing into your life. So I do see in the month of May, um, the biggest investment is you. So you are investing in yourself directly or indirectly. Directly would look like mm, investing more time for self-care, uh, meditation, or working on your mental health, things like this, um, even like working out. Investing indirectly in yourself would look like purchasing good food, buying comfortable clothes, buying sustainable clothes, or mm, purchasing a piece of technology you really need for your work for your progress, uh, purchasing the tools you need to progress forward. This is what you're doing in the month of May. So the spiritual and the material plane are really blending for you guys. But once again, I do see how the universe is reminding you that spirituality is meant to improve your physical life, not make it miserable. You are being encouraged to not be afraid of being happy and to just indulge in your happiness and and yeah do what feels right um and not only on a stimulating level where do what feels right or this is different not doing what feels good but doing what feels right to do this is what once again you are encouraged to do with neptune remember i mentioned how you're seeing only pieces of the whole thing or like these silhouettes but only parts of silhouettes um how you're getting glimpses glimpses of things for some of you who are a bit more advanced within your psychic abilities i feel like if you've been channeling up until this point um light language mediumship things like that i feel like you're going to start to see like hands of the spirits you talk to or a part of their face or their back, their silhouette, their feet walking towards you, a piece of their cloth. Um, spirit is trying to, is starting, sorry, to reveal itself more and more to you clairvoyantly. Neptune is a very, very, very clairvoyant planet, but not only that. Neptune is the artist and the spiritualist all at once. Neptune is a higher octave of Venus and that's why it takes on this artistic ability, but usually this is more of a 
more of a spiritual, evolved, otherworldly form of art, uh, something that's never been done before, something that's um, unbelievable, like how could somebody execute this? For example, with Uranus, you know, this is the type of genius or creation that is new and otherworldly, but simply because it's very complex, very complicated, very genius. Not everyone has the mental stamina to come up with something like that. While with Neptune, the the works of art that feel otherworldly, they feel like the artist wasn't themselves when they created it. It feels like something bigger took over and created uh, through the artists. So this is Neptune and you may feel like this. You may really feel like the universe is creating through you. So expect in the month of May a slight um, dissociation or a feeling like you're not quite yourself. That's simply because the universe is trying to create something very unique that you you've never believed yourself to be capable of or you don't think you have the skills to create it but for some reason that creativity will come it will flow through you and this is definitely spiritual universal inspiration that you're channeling so i do think for a lot of you you guys are going to monetize your art you're going to monetize your vision uh, your psychic abilities, you're going to align your spiritual essence with your human and uh, bodily needs and I think that this is amazing. There is such a syn synchronization between the material plane and the spiritual plane for you. Of course, uh, you have to be careful because things will manifest a lot quicker than usual, so you have to be mindful of your thoughts, etc, etc. But it's affirmed here that it is safe for you to be powerful. It is safe for you to manifest. Um, so if you feel like, am I doing something wrong when I manifest? Am I like mm, manipulating reality or the matrix or the universe? Am I going against my spiritual beliefs when I desire to create more abundance in my life? And there is this confirmation that no, it's safe for you to be powerful, it's okay to take charge of your life in positive ways. And also, <laughs> the time to decide card, make decisions based on your heart's true desires. So denying your heart, denying what you love, denying your passions is very non-spiritual to do. So you definitely want to listen to that organ in the center of your body <laughs> that beautiful heart chakra that tells you exactly what your desires are. But perhaps the biggest glow up here is the confidence. You're gaining a lot of confidence in yourself and in your expression, in your ability to consciously create and to manifest. So in the month of May, don't be afraid to get back into your manifestation books, law of attraction, law of assumption, getting back into some journaling and scripting, things like that. If you've been falling off that wagon, falling off track with these things, get back into them in the month of May, you'll be highly rewarded. I'm trying to see if there is anything else here for you. And I think it's time to channel some more detailed messages. Something that's really drawing me is the yellow cloth on this yogi or Buddhist. And the orange colors here, the red colors, and I'm seeing that for many of you, your guides may appear dressed in yellow or orange. Many of you are working with solar deities and solar representatives, solar beings. I'm getting something about healing your body 
on a spiritual level will impact it on the physical level and that this connection to the sun is very needed with Neptune. I feel like you guys have been hiding from the world, hiding from the spotlight, hiding from light in general. You've been perhaps these night owls, working a lot late hours, working late at night, getting inspiration late at night or just being very dreamy in general. You're working with these solar guides in the month of May because they need you to take conscious charge, conscious charge, um, and leadership over these inspirations you receive at night, over these dreamy visions. And you know, it's funny because the month of May is the month of Taurus, predominantly. Of course, we catch a, little, a glimpse of Gemini as well at the end, but predominantly the month of Taurus, so the bull. And Hathor, being the goddess of the bull, is the mother of Horus, who is a solar deity. Then we also have, um, I'm not sure if I pronounce it correctly, but Zoaster, uh, Zo Zoastrism or Zoaster, where um, Mitra, or Mitra, I'm not sure, once again with the pronunciations, basically their god, their deity, um, he rides on the back of a bull and that's the sun riding on, uh, on the back of the earth, if you will, or the sun and the earth becoming one. Um, and it represents the process of fertilization. So you're working with these solar guides because you have already, you already have the seeds in the soil, okay? You've already been fertilized from the inside. Um, you've been embedded with the inspiration, with the visions, with everything you need. That solar energy is supposed to support you during the growth process or the birthing process, pushing things into the light. So you, if you have many projects which are hidden in the back of your room, in the back of your closet, um, and with abundance, that abundance mindset is supposed to inspire you to push them out there. Show them to the world. Put them on display. Overall, I see great glow up and just great things. I feel like you're healing from your shadows. Um, and you're getting out of your shadows as well, pile one. I really want to give you something more, you guys, like some more details, something. So I'll try to meditate, channel, see if anyone or anything comes through. I'm seeing a river and I'm hearing your guides say that you guys are going to have a very um, inconsistent path, a very inconsistent route because you're meant to go in many directions, one after the other. So changing priorities very quickly is something you have to adjust to or just accept. Your guides are saying that... Um, don't allow yourself to be misled by, <laughs> weirdly, but by certain motivational speakers. I don't know why I'm getting this, but they're saying to avoid limiting literature and limiting motivational speeches. Um, your path will be abundant. It will be holistic. It will be about manifesting, it will be about even like new age spirituality and that's okay, but there are also a lot of these new age or modern self-improvement doctrines that you should be avoiding because it's going to create a lot more fears in the long run. 
um, a lot of fear, a, a lot of fears and a lot of reasons to hold yourself back and your spirit guides don't want you to hold yourself back. You have a lot of fire right now, interestingly enough, but because you've been very watery, I feel like working with this fire element is bringing balance. Um, and yes, when fire and water are combined, we have air, so we have the mental body um, starting to dominate. So in the month of May, you'll be thinking a lot more and doing a lot more than feeling and intuiting. Does that make sense? I hope it does. But if you've been going off of your intuition for a long time, in the month of May, it will be thinking, structuring, organizing, and taking action. But I keep getting this message, you are the river. Don't attach yourself to a mode of operation. You're gonna have cycles and periods. You're not gonna be thinking, structuring, organizing force uh, forever. You're, you're not gonna be the executing force forever. You will go back to the water. But right now you're working with fire, you're transitioning towards air, then you go into the earth and then you go back into water. And this is the cycle you will move through. Um, specifically for some of you, I keep getting the numbers 1 and 4, so 4, 4, 4, 14, 41, 1, 4, things like that. These two numbers come up a lot, um, and this is the initiation and the new things, you know, number 1 of structures, number 4. New solidifications, new embodiments, new structures, new building blocks, um, new routines, um, new foundations. This is your focus in the month of May on a spiritual level. So I hope this resonated. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know. And if you purchase the extended portion, I'll see you there. And if not, thank you for your stay here. I really appreciate you watching this until the end. Make sure to like, share, subscribe to support my channel. And I hope I'll see you in my next video as well. Bye. Hello, Pio you. Welcome to your reading. These are your spiritual messages for the month of May. Um, from all the beings and guides that you work with. And... I allowed myself some time to rest from pile one, meditate on you guys, you know, connect with you. And I had these visions. Um, so I saw this path. You're walking on a path. And I heard that it's painful to walk on this path. Then I had these visions of um, drops of blood leaving a trace on the path. And this huge red dragon awaiting at the end. I feel like many of you have been living life as if you're always preparing for a battle or lately things have been feeling like you're fighting all the time, you're battling something all the time. Um, and it's strange, but I'm getting these mixed messages. Um, so on, on one side, there is this message of it's painful to walk on this path, you know, maybe maybe I shouldn't be walking on the path. And then this other message, the pain is worth it, I'm learning so much. So I'm not really sure if you want to necessarily get off a difficult route, the difficult journey, difficult path or not. Or you want to stick to it and see where it takes you because at the end of the had this dragon it didn't feel like a monster or someone or something that will attack you or is the um a villain you have to fight it felt like it was you it felt like it was also 
a higher version of you, a guardian, an ancestor. And at the very, 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 very beginning of the reading, I sensed the strong presence of a grandmother. And many of you have grandmothers on the other side, so let me try to be as specific as I can. This woman felt big. Like, she felt big and strong and um, sturdy. And um, she knew what had to be done and she got it done herself or she made somebody do it and she did not tolerate excuses. This is a very tough feminine presence. Um, and I'm almost getting, you know, this energy from her like, Child, how could you give up? <laughs> that's that's the specific words I'm hearing. How could you give up? Why would you give up on something you were fighting for for so long? You bled for, you sweat for, and also the ancestors did as well. Why would you give up on this? It's difficult, but it doesn't mean it's not meant for you. So she is coming very strong. Um... And very fierce. I'm getting the, the letter J-L-H. Um, and these letters might be very present in her name. Or might be initials. But I'm getting these three letters. You guys have to be tougher. Something about you piles you that feels like you're energetically given up and and you shouldn't be given up. You have to be tougher. I know that's a difficult message to hear, especially if you're dealing with something that's very exhausting, but I'm getting you have to push through. Period. And even your spirit guides, including, you know, this ancestor and probably other ancestors for different people watching this. They also don't want you to give up. They are pushing through this along with you. It does feel unfair because you believe you're going through this on your own, but you really are not. <laughs> Worship, okay. Power animal. Mm -hmm. Oracle cards and... Lighter constellation, crystal vision, duty, long term, and great events. With oracle cards, you guys have the message of you're able to discern answers and guidance for yourself and others. Your animal spirit guide is a guardian to you and is helping you with this situation. And then you have just worship. So maybe your spirit guides are reminding you of your fate of where you come from, your origin. With Lyra, we have like the origin of the body, origin of the incarnational process, the cradle of life, the womb of the universe, many labels for Lyra and the Lyran constellation, but it's believed that this is one of the first um, constellations where consciousness decided to descend and then emanate that blueprint for dissension and ascension onto other constellations too. So Sirius, our sun, um, and our planetary system, etc. Oracle cards. You've seen the future. Um, you have this ability. You have a fortune-telling ability. Um, but often, Honestly, you are able to discern answers and guidance for yourself and others. Often powerful psychics and mediums cannot predict for themselves because that gift is not meant to be an advantage. It's not meant to be mm, exploited. Usually the gift of having, you know, spiritual powers, psychic abilities, Usually this comes with a sacrifice. You have to sacrifice something else. And often is the knowledge of your own future. You don't know where the future will take you because 
yeah, you may find yourself like being self-employed and you don't know if you're always going to have a clientele. You may find yourself not being trusted or mocked by people and you have to deal with that. Usually spiritual development comes through sacrifice. Neptune, the most spiritual of all planets, comes with sacrifices and it symbolizes sacrifices and loss in astrology as well. And this is no coincidence. So your spirit guides are telling you that the more spiritual power you're going to obtain, the more sacrifices you have to make. And just because this path is difficult doesn't mean you didn't want it, you didn't choose it, or it's not right for you. So some of you with the worship card, you're being reminded not to worship anything because I'm just... I hate the word and what it connotates. Um, but you just remember your faith. Remember... Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Something fell on my face. Um, remember your faith and just how strong it made you feel. The... So the sacrifice you have to make, on the other hand, having a strong faith and a higher power also gives you advantage. So things are always balanced, you know, as a more spiritually developed person, you may feel like you're making a lot more sacrifices because you see a lot more truth than other people and you have to live with that. Even before the truth has taken place and nobody believes it will take place, you know it will take place and you have to live with that. But on the other hand, you have all of this support. You have um, this amazing team of beings that work with you and for you. I should also note that with the power animal, um, for many of you it's likely that your spirit animal guide has revealed themselves. It, it can be a real animal that exists you know, and we know about it, we have, we can google it, and we have pictures, etc. And also it can be a mythical creature. So for some of you, a mythical creature revealed itself to be your spirit animal guide, for others it's an actual animal that maybe you see all the time when you go outside, when you go in nature, or it's somehow connected even to your lineage. Um, I'm getting from your guides that you guys should start wearing an amulet. If you have an amulet with a spirit animal um, totem on it, like a little item, please wear it. Or even like a little item that you can attach to your keys or to your wallet, to your bag. And just wear that animal totem. I feel like it's important. Maybe in the month of May you will receive that animal, you will receive a gift, because after all, this energy is about the month of May, so this is where you're headed, and these these are kind of like predictions. So if you haven't been introduced to your power animal, you will be in the month of May, so pay attention. Um, Lighten star seeds, and just other souls who are just awakening to their star seed origin as well. With Lyra, I've always felt um, this royal energy, so it's very likely many of you are awakening to a royal lineage or a galactic origin, or maybe just you're looking into the royal stars, which are Antares, um, Regulus formal hold and Aldebaran. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, these are the four fixed um, astrological signs and within them set the royal stars, the royal fixed stars. So you may be awakening to star seed origins from these star systems um, or simply you may be awakening to Royal Lyran Guides. Now, Lyran Starseeds usually resonate with the spirit animal of a lion, a tiger, a cat, some feline, or birds. Um, and specifically, owls are very, and falcons are very, 
at least in what I've seen in the Akashic Records, they're very much representative of the Lyran lineage. Falcons, because they are connected to Horus and gold, um, especially the Golden Hulk um, or Golden Falcon. Hmm. Okay, Falcon and Hawks. <laughs> uh, I don't know if they're the same or not, because when I think of the word, the same imagery pops up in my mind, so please look up both, like, specifically a golden hawk or a golden falcon. I'm sure one of these two, uh, I was reading about it because I saw it in one of my meditations when I was looking into the lions as a general group of beings, so yeah lions and feline, uh, felines and um, bird-like guides are very likely to be connecting with you if you're awakening to your lion origin. In the month of May you may actually receive a reading with the oracle cards. You may receive a reading where a lot is revealed to you, um, a, long, a lot about your long-term purpose, long-term goals and just your mission here on earth. Um, what your duty is, what your, what vision you should be executing while you're here on earth. In the month of May, you may receive this um, reading that connects you with a higher power and you remember why you believed in certain things in the first place. So I do find this to be very, very good for you guys because You've been walking on this path of pain and ancestors, your spirit team are like, it's worth it. It's worth to push through this. Let's see what else we have. I would love to channel some more. All right, let's see. Hmm. I'm looking at this card for some reason and this portion here, I don't know if you can see. Let me... So, this one, for some reason, it looks like a little baby wrapped up in, you know, those clothes that babies are wrapped up in when they're very, very little. And it feels like this baby is falling off a cliff or something. I don't know why I have this vision in my mind. You're too quick to reject something in the month of May, so... Please delay any huge decisions in the month of May because you may be rejecting something that you will regret. You may be throwing away the baby with the bath water. Um, don't rush decisions. Don't rush saying no or yes and just like closing doors, walking through doors. Don't rush this. Month of May. <laughs> in the month in the month of May, you can expect um a lot of people intruding your life, entering when they're not invited. You have to set boundaries because. You'll be meeting, or somehow you'll be in, in the same environment as many people who <laughs> they have a sixth sense about um, energy banks, and you are like a walking energy banks. These people are energy vampires. Oh my goodness, wild well, you! I am seeing this crowd and they can sense how much energy you hold and they will want to be friends, they will invite you places, they will invite themselves into your life um, really, really quickly. And they're seeking answers for, from you. They're entering your life and they pretend as if they're giving something to you and all of a sudden, they're asking you all of these questions, they're draining your knowledge. And I feel like many of you have a lot of knowledge to write a book, 
create a course, something like this. And all of these people are taking it out of you. I'm getting the name Kristen. It's a particular name, but I'm getting it. I feel this might be one of the people in that group. For some of you, this may be your own very name and this would signify yeah, the messages for you definitely. But I'm getting more so this name to be one of these energy vampires. Oh god, I cringe so bad when I even use that label, but I have no other words to express it. Um, but yeah, it's funny because these people are not obviously energy drainers. Because they come into your life pretending like they're giving you something and... You owe them something in return, you know, and they create this almost natural dynamic where, you know, they ask you questions and you feel like, yeah, I should answer, you know, I should really share some knowledge here because they've been giving me so much and I haven't been giving anything. This type of dynamic you should definitely avoid in the month of May. I can't wait to get to your love reading as well because for some of you, I even sense there is a person who comes into your life, they offer so much, uh, apparently, supposedly, but they really pretend, they really want to be like you and they really start to pretend that they're you, in a way. Um, and this somehow has something to do with your love life and other relationships you have. I feel like they're trying to get to someone through you. And they, so they pretend to be a really good friend. This blue dress reminds me of um, elementary school teacher or, or just a teacher in general, but definitely someone who works with kids. This is so specific, but someone, if you also are in that field, you may have a colleague like, if both of you work with children, maybe therapy, psychiatry, um, your teachers in elementary school or some other shape or, or form of a schooling system, uh, you have a rival who pretends to be your friend and who pretends to be giving you so much. So, your ancestors want to warn you about that. That's why they, they're coming through with so much, like empowerment they don't want you to forget your path because somebody is taking all of your knowledge and they are gently pushing you in a new direction they are taking all your knowledge and they're like you know i think you would be really good at this if you study it more or explore it and they suggest a completely different field where you may have a, an interest but it's not your thing necessarily Many of you, you have found your thing. You know what it is. But there are people who feel like if you follow your path, you're going to become too powerful. So they guide you into these different directions. And I don't like that. Your spirit guides don't like that. Your ancestors don't like that. What else, spirit? I'm hearing Lady Isis. So many of you are working with Lady Isis. And I am being reminded of that legend where she cloaked herself as this 
old powerless lady who was asking for help and nobody helped her until one woman actually helped her, took her in, and Isis, in return of, of the favor, you know, she recognized that this woman was good and she didn't judge Isis, even though Isis was dressed as this older, powerless, exhausted woman. Um, Isis um, turned the child of this woman into a god, or tried to at least. I don't remember if she finished the work, but she yeah, put the baby in this um, magical fire. Anyway, but this... <laughs> uh, you're working with Lady Isis because she is helping you see who are the really good people and she's saying that sometimes your spirit team puts you in these situations where you may need help or you may struggle because they want to reveal to you who is really there for you and um, and it's not about you being a victim and looking for a savior and that's the only way somebody proves they really care about you? Not at all. It's just that certain people will be afraid to help you because they recognize that if they help you, you're gonna become too powerful. So you might as well stay weak and helpless and they will leave you there. Um, many times people don't reach out to others to you know, help them simply because they're afraid. And they're jealous and they're afraid that they may push somebody to greater success than they could push themselves into, you know? And I feel like you'll be dealing with these people in the month of May or at least you'll be recognizing them for who they really are. I'm seeing a cloak and like the true face of people being reviewed. Oh, right. So pile you i feel like this is all the spiritual messages and guidance i receive for you guys i hope this is helpful if you purchase the extended portion of this reading i will see you there but if not thank you so much for watching this thank until the end of the reading i really appreciate you please 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 make sure to like share and subscribe to the channel because this really helps me um, grow this community and I really hope I'll see you in my next video as well. Until then, bye! Hello Pio3 and welcome! Welcome to your reading. So let's see what are the spiritual messages for you guys. One thing I remember is that when I was pulling cards from this deck, two wanted to come out instead of one. Um, and I was pretty stubborn about pulling just one card. Uh, you know, when I think of a certain number of cards, I really want to get this amount of cards. But sometimes they have a mind of their own. And this is the case for you. And I feel like you're just going to receive a lot more out of a situation than you expect. So let's see. Let's see what comes through. You guys have support. Your life purpose fully supports you. Well, that's pretty cool because this is like a confirmation that... Yeah, you can make money out of something you love. Yes, this will sustain your lifestyle. Yes, it will be enough. I mean, you may be fearing that your true desires won't give you enough. And, oh gosh. Yeah, the metaphor that I just gave you. I love it. Uh, heart chakra. The answer that you seek is in your heart right now. Be open to giving and to receiving love. We have the bear constellation, adaptation, reprogramming, and freedom to fly, <laughs> companionship, and empathy. Hmm. You guys are really thinking with your heart, like companionship, empathy, the heart chakra, support, even even this one. You really are thinking with your heart, and I'm. And I'm seeing a lot of healers in this pile, even like not just energy healers, not just Reiki practitioners. I'm also seeing um, people in the medical field who have studied for years in university. Basically, people that have followed the rules, they are in the system, but they're still doing a very, very needed work. And that is healing and focusing on people's health. So do you see many of you working in the health industry? Mm. A 
a lot of your spiritual messages revolve around your relationship uh, with the romantic partner mostly but for some of you it may be a really deep platonic relationship to your best friend a sibling however i will for the most part focus on the love relationship because so far this is what's coming through many of you guys have a mother watching over and seeing you trying to not make the same mistakes in love as she did i'm getting the person that this message applies to you've already been divorced once um your mother's spirit was there for you during that process and she still is she still is but i feel like you haven't been feeling her as strongly and um in the month of may perhaps it's a great time to honor the spirit of your mom if she is on the other side um which for those of you who resonate with the message most likely that's the case because i'm really channeling a spirit here not necessarily the energy of a still living person many of you your spiritual journey once again has been super 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 tied to love uh, love relationships soulmates twin flames karmic partnerships and for the most part you've dealt with the lessons on your own and you've developed great empathy for people who don't return the excitement or the feelings or the recognition of how special a connection is I'm hearing, oh my goodness, I'm hearing you guys are oracles, but your curse is that you have to live through the truth on your own. Um, hmm. Why are you cursed? What What is this? Yeah, so... Those of you who resonate to have had past lives as oracles, you know, mediums and psychics, especially in ancient times, in the temples, in the mystery schools, you guys many have um, crossed that vowel to not allow, you know, that type of love take over you and your body and your spirit and your mind. You ruined you broke the promise you broke the vow and and now you're sort of paying off this karma and your spirit guides your team knows that this is difficult so they really try to support you through your purpose i feel like this right now your purpose your career is one of the few things that really sustains you that really makes you happy and gives you a spark of excitement and just motivation to keep going on but yeah many of you are falling in love with the forbidden lovers you are reenacting that past life situation And many of you are dealing with people that you're not supposed to be with in this lifetime. That is your greatest spiritual lesson, loving people from a distance. Unconditionally loving people from a distance. Unconditionally embracing the situation for what it is. You've been on this long journey of merging your heart chakra and your third eye. Like the mind and the heart. Synchronizing them. To become the best healer to exist, to become the most accurate, best psychic, um, to be the most empowered version of yourself on your spiritual journey. The heart and mind connection is the alchemical path, but you've been walking it alone and I do see in the month of May you're very needy for a companionship you 
really think about that while the universe is opening doors in terms of your purpose and career, finances, self-development, things like that to, to try to be there for you when the other thing you want seems so far of reach and so impossible. It's not impossible, but I feel like the time has still not come. I'm hearing um, every time you guys go to sleep, there is either an angel in your room, by the window, or an angel literally hugging you, wrapping their wings around you. Because I see you wrapped up in those feathers, in those wings. I'm getting pile 3, you shouldn't be discouraged, you have a soulmate also looking for you, they're dealing with a very similar situation, they can't seem to find the one, the people they think are the one or not the one, or don't turn out to be, so they deal with a very very similar situation. In the month of May, um, you may receive an invitation for a conversation, for closure, you may receive a phone call, somebody wants to talk to you and bring clarity, bring, bring closure to the situation and I feel like during the conversation you will have a lot of like spiritual activity around you, you will have a lot of guides coming forth. Um, you have the spirit of your mom being right next to you or you may have this conversation while you were meditating and suddenly this person calls you or you were, I don't know, doing a ritual, you were praying, something. Or you were in a spiritual bookstore or something like that. I just see you surrounded by these higher frequency things, people, spirits, envi the environment in general, uh, you're in the midst of a higher frequency practice and this is when this person calls you because the universe aligns, aligns this call, this conversation with also your moment of you being your strongest version, you being able to have that honesty and have that conversation, speak your truth and hear the other person's truth as well. The month of May, I feel like on a spiritual level, will be very nostalgic because you're missing the unity, the unification, being everything with everything, you know, being one with everything. Um, and I feel like many of you will be missing your origins, you'll be missing your homes or something far outside and in the universe that you call home, you'll be reminiscing about that. I'm just getting a lot of nostalgia being awakened in the month of May. You, you have a lot to process within the archetype of Cancer, the fourth house. Abandonment, ancestors, home, creating home within. 
all of these things will be activated in the month of May for you. It's interesting, but if you feel heavy energy, I don't think it's coming just from you. I think that there are people who were in your life who miss you or they regret things. And all of this energy ricochets back onto you and you feel it. So you may start missing somebody out all, all of a sudden. Um, you may start um, regretting decisions you made towards somebody and... That's because you really are feeling exactly what they're going through. So yeah, in the month of May, you'll be working very much within your emotional body out of all the layers of non-physical bodies. You'll be working with the emotional body um you'll be going through a lot of memories um you need a lot of meditation during the month of may so please make sure you have spare time for meditation um your empathy is becoming telepathy you know you first feel people you feel how they feel and you feel even what they think but at some point I think that you will start hearing in your mind their thoughts or you'll be thinking the exact same things and this is becoming um, this is starting off with your soulmates and karmics first so if you're all of a sudden thinking about someone you're, you're sure you forgot about a long time ago they're just all up in your head about you at the same time. That bear, spirit guide, is really teaching you how to respect yourself. You have to be patient for the one to come into your life. This is your spiritual test right now not tolerating or settling for something less than what you want and what you need and i know i know how cliche this sounds trust me but i feel like the one for you that's coming at first they won't feel like a fairy tale soulmate or twin flame they will be peaceful the person for you brings you peace and you've been on this long journey of learning that you are mostly connected to your soul. You are most spiritual when you are at peace with yourself, with life. No drama, no karma, no question marks, no feeling crazy, feeling like life is crazy. Um, sometimes even when we experience magical synchronicities, if we are not in the right state energetically, we feel crazy. We start going off like, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe it. That's impossible. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. We're going into this panic mode and adrenaline driven mode, excited mode, um, because we're still not in the right space to receive the message. We simply see the physical manifestation and we go nuts about it. That's okay, but you've been on this journey of your heart being trained to learn to recognize peace. And when you are at peace, you decipher spiritual psychic language just like that. And your soulmate will come through and they will teach you how to sustain peace, create peace, obtain it, you know, pass it on to somebody else as well. Empaths are not just, you don't just receive emotion, you emit emotion. And I feel like very 
uh, not very many empaths realize that you don't just experience the emotions of others. You, um, you expand their emotions and you kind of blow up in that person's face. You blow up because of that person's emotions, but also because of your inability to transmute that. And this is when empaths have difficult relationships. So your heart has been really mu uh, very much trained um, to not mindlessly or spontaneously murder back emotions in a chaotic way, but to actually transmute them. And if you return anything to people, you return it with healing and with peace. In the month of May, you will become a support system for somebody. I feel like Spirit is getting you out of a rut, out of a state of self-pity by making you more needed rather than needy. Okay, you're more needed than somebody like somebody really needs your help, support, presence and this someone is more important than your selfish need to be a victim all the time. So there's this reversal of roles and I'm sorry if I sound offensive or direct but that's how I receive this message and I don't want to elaborate too much on it when it's something so simple. So yeah, this is the form of sacrifice your heart is initiated into. Valuing somebody else so much more and being there for them when they need you instead of feeling like you're the most important person in the world with the biggest problems in the world. This selfless sacrifice is what proves your heart is ready. So the month of May is very challenging emotionally, but also there is this great growth happening. Your mind will be healed, pile three. In the month of May, your mind is being healed. Okay, I really want to see if there is anything else coming through, but I'm not getting much else. Something around your head. I keep seeing the head and like a lot of healing energy surrounding it. Something around your head is healing. Maybe you're healing from hair loss, you know, issues with your eyesight. Something concerning the head. And I'm also getting that if you've felt like you're numb, like your five senses are numb or overstimulated, there is this detox in the month of May that you're highly encouraged to do, but I think that even for those of you who don't take conscious action towards detoxification, you will go through some sort of detox so that your senses can return to their regular um, capacity to, you know, be stimulated. You're getting rid of the numbness. Especially the emotional numbness. I feel like in the month of May, for a lot of you, you're gonna laugh a lot more. You're gonna just be happy a lot more than usual.
And if you've been thinking about getting a pet that's coming through for some reason, um, the month of May might be very, very good for doing so. Very appropriate, very allowing for you to find the pet, to, right, to find the right animal. I'm getting that pet will heal your heart chakra furthermore. Well, pile three, honestly, hmm. not getting a lot more. Um, I'm not getting a lot more, so I think I'll end the reading here. I don't want to force it. So if you go into the extended portion, I'll see you there. But if you decide not to, that's okay. Thank you so much for watching this until the end. I really appreciate you. I would love it if you like, share and subscribe to the channel. If you like share and share the video. That really helps me grow this community and it just shows support. And that is the easiest way to do it. And even I would say most efficient way to do it. So I would be just very, very excited and appreciative. Um, I have no other <laughs> disclaimers, so yeah, that's it. Hopefully, I'll see you on my next pick card as well. Bye, Pile 3.